let's talk about sourdough and coffee. A few months ago, the World Barista Championship saw many different coffees using a variety of processing methods. Quite a few of them used some kind of fermentation, and I was interested by one particular method using koji yeast, which is used to make soy sauce and miso soup. All these methods were applied to the bean while the fruit was still on it. So I got curious if I could apply anything like this to green beans. So I grabbed my sourdough starter and threw some green beans in it. I was quite surprised at the results. Acidity and bitterness be gone. Typically, yeast can be used to process coffee cherries and then the fruit is removed from the bean. After reading about people using yeast fermentation methods, I realized I would probably not get green beans this way. Acquiring coffee fruit is nearly impossible, so I would be unable to do what they do in my kitchen. I could find a place that sold green koji coffee, but it could be challenging to compare yeast processed to some controlled sample, and usually it is sold roasted or at some high price. I decided to do it on my own using what I knew from sourdough bread baking. I was impatient, so I used sourdough starter instead of ordering koji yeast. After I talked to a few people, there is doubt that the yeast is fermenting the actual beans, but that they are benefiting from other enzymes in the starter because the starter itself has flour for the yeast to eat. Afinor has been doing yeast processing on green beans for some time, but the criticism is that they are buying lower grade beans and trying to increase the grade after buying from the farm. They market their process as a way to reduce coffee uh, waste. My aim was not to buy lower grade beans, but to increase the grades of the coffee I was already using. Speaking of beans, let's take a look at the coffee beans I was using. I bought them from Sweet Maria's and they have their own grading similar to, Q, similar to Q grading. A top coffee will score around 92, just as a point of reference. Anything above 90 is very good. My aim was to get a variety of blend qualities so I could see if any particular coffee saw more of an advantage. Here are the four roasts used for these sourdough experiments with their scores and origins. All of the blends were half bean one and half bean two, except for February 9th, 2022, which used 8% Robusta. For the process itself, I used sourdough starter, mixed with some water and the beans and let it sit for a day. Then I rinsed it, dried it in the oven and roasted it. Here is the key recipe. Add sourdough starter and warm water to the coffee beans and mix. Cover and let rest for 24 hours. Rinse thoroughly dry, and then roast. These variables have only changed in quantity uh, since when I started and I've been trying to improve the process. So I put them in a table. I recently got a multi-function Instant Pot, which has been a game changer. It has allowed total control over the process, but it is not necessary. It is capable of doing a sous vide at a specific temperature and then it can be used to dry the beans as well. During this process, the beans seem to germinate a bit in the mixture, which I found interesting. I usually dry the beans until they are the same weight as they were originally, but I know there's extra moisture in them because some of the material has been eaten by the yeast. And I know this because if I keep drying the beans, they will lose even more weight and they will go far below what I would expect the beans to go uh, without this processing. While roasting, I did find that it took a few more minutes to hit the first crack, and I had to modify when I ended the roast. I usually end a roast one minute past the first crack, but in this case, the beans weren't developed enough until two minutes past the first crack. Additionally, with respect to roasting, because this technique removes most of the bitterness, one could go even darker on a roast. I was a little bit nervous to do that because I don't have much experience with roasts that are closer to the second crack, but it seems like the uh, result of the processing allows for a darker roast. Aside from roast times, the yeast processed coffees 
also lost a lot more weight during the roasting. However, the densities for all the beans was about the same. To uh, test these beans, I used two different machines. I used the Kim Express and the Decent Espresso machine. I used the Niche Grinder. Um, and then for shop preparation, I used uh, a few different variants. I used Takato Tamping, which is the closest to a regular shot. It's just a two tamp um, shot. I used Takato and then inside out Takato uh, technique. Most of these shots had a long pre-infusion, around 25 to 30 seconds. For uh, pressure profile, I used pressure pulsing and I use a 20 gram VST basket. I also use an Otago TDS meter and an Arcadia uh, Pixis scale. And for sifting, I use a Kruv sifter. I use two metrics for evaluating the differences between techniques, final score and coffee extraction. Final score is the average of a scorecard of seven metrics, sharp, rich, syrup, sweet, sour, bitter, and aftertaste. These scores were objective, of course, but they were helpful to uh, improving my shots and they were according to my taste. Uh, I also use total dissolved solids, which measures the amount of coffee that is in the cup. And from that, you can determine the extraction yield if you know the input and output weights. Additionally, I use another metric that I call intensity radius which is defined as the radius from the origin on the control chart for TDS versus uh, EA or extraction yield. This metric helps normalize shot performance across output yield and brew ratio. So then I looked at a bunch of paired shots with and without yeast. The yeast process shots were very noticeable from the beginning and they turned into the best shots I've ever had up until that point. Their main strength was cutting out acidity and bitterness, and this allowed the sweetness to really come through. Here are 34 shot pairs on a scatter plot to show how they compare with the baseline on the x-axis and the yeast shots on the y-axis. The TDS slash extraction yield slash intensity radius was pretty similar, so I didn't find a good reason to split it up by roast. Not all roasts are affected the same. The uh, February 9th roast, which had 8% Robusta, had mixed results. Oddly enough, the February 4th roast was not as good as the others, which was interesting because I used the highest scoring coffees for that roast. In looking at timing, yeast shots ran faster at the start. They more quickly covered the filter but their total time was more than the control shots. I broke down sweet, sour, and bitter in my taste scale. The other metrics were not as directly affected by yeast processing. You can look at the average scores to see how yeast processing affects taste. For me, I didn't notice much of an effect on the syrup or mouthfeel component. Finally, I looked at the general statistics using a two-tailed t-test for the 34 pairs. The quantitative extraction methods didn't see a statistically significant difference, but final score or taste metrics did. If you home roast, try some yeast. If you're bothered by acidity, try some yeast. I've continued to roast with and without yeast processing, and I'm interested in exploring other yeast. I'm currently looking at using koji rice and koji yeast to impart some goodness on the green beans. I've been calling this miso coffee because the yeast is eating more of the material outside of the bean than it is the actual bean, which is probably similar to what's going on at the farm because the yeast is acting on the cherries and it's imparting some good enzymes on to the bean itself. I'm particularly excited about the yeasting process used by farmers. And I'm glad I have a way to explore this at home. One day I hope I can work with a farm on this kind of weird stuff. If you like my content, ferment your excitement until bubbling and hit the subscribe button.